Baird & Co are one of the UK's biggest coin and bullion dealers, if not the biggest coin and bullion dealer. They were founded in 1967 by Tony Baird, and he remains their boss, and he's talking to me now. Hello, Tony. How are you doing? I'm fine, thank you, Dominic. Why don't you describe to us what's been going on in the, in the uh, physical gold market, your, your experiences over the last six months, and, and just compare them to, to for example, 1979-80, the last time gold fever raged. Oh, to a great extent, there are many similarities between uh, the, the, the current predicaments of the, ba- of the banks and, indeed, uh, the, the public interest in bullion and gold coins. In 1979, the public couldn't actually buy um, gold. They could only buy gold coins. Uh, gold itself uh, was subject to VAT, uh, which it isn't now. It's completely VAT-free, of course. Uh, and so, so coins were massively popular then. There had been a severe banking crash in 1974 when many of the smaller banks were bailed out by the Bank, Bank of England lifeboat, not far off what's happening now. Uh, and... There was a, a wave of buying into bullion th- throughout the mid to, to late 70s. And what you're seeing now is very, very similar. Over the last couple of years, business has steadily increased. Uh, the interest in gold coins and indeed now small gold bars, which have been that exempt since the uh, January 2000 um, by an EC directive. Um, gold bars and gold coins are now as popular as each other. And s- since the, I suppose in the last... Uh, the last four months since since Lehman Brothers uh, decided to throw in the towel uh, and, uh, and others looked very wobbly, there has been a massive movement of money out of banks and, and into physical bullion, which people are taking home and putting under the bed. It's, it, it's been quite surprising. Is this the busiest you've ever known it? I, I would say it was probably, probably busier in 1978-79, but... Not really. This is this is the busiest it's been for many many years. Yes, and and it, and that that busyness has uh, accelerated over the last four months, which is interesting. Yes, it, it, it had it had or well, business had been building up steadily over the last couple of years, with more and more inquiries about physical bullion and and indeed bullion on account for that matter, which is a more convenient way, by the way, of, uh, of most public members of the public owning it. They don't have the insurance risk or the risk of robbery at home and so on. Um, but gradually. It was building up until, until until it was very well until Bradford and Bingley, I suppose. That was that was the main trigger when people realised that their money in banks was only safe up to up to the as far as the government guarantee uh, of, on deposits was concerned, and they've just been lowering the value of the money they've got in banks and spending it on physical bullion. And Bradford and Bingley would have been the start of it. That was probably a year ago now. On your website, uh, you say there are delays on uh, gold, silver, platinum, and palladium bars, and uh, you seem to be out of stock of various coins. Is there, is there a real shortage of physical metal at the moment? Uh, there's not a shortage of physical metal as such. Uh, don't forget that our bars are manufactured by us, and so we have a, a manufacturing capacity that's tailored to suit what we would not call normal levels of business. Um, but the volumes of business that we've been putting through in the last four to five months have increased so much that our manufacturing capacity is now stretched. And so on that front, the delays are simply getting the queue, they're coming off the end of the production line as fast as possible, and you'll, and you'll be a week or three getting delivery. Mm-hmm. Um, but as far as the gold coins are concerned, we normally carry millions of pounds of gold coins. Um, we're big stockists. Um, and but those stocks have been going one way, that is out of the door, for the last three or four months, and our stocks are very low. And so w- what we've decided to do is because the market is so volatile, uh, and we there aren't many sellers, and therefore there are no um, uh, obvious premiums available on people selling stuff to us. We were we are reluctant to sell anymore simply because we don't know what premium to charge because the replacement premium isn't apparent because there are no sellers. And so we've stopped taking orders for most gold coins, um, although our stocks are slowly building up again. When they've built up, then we'll be able to continue making a market for coins as well. I see. And what have been the most popular coins, Sovereigns and Krugerrands? Oh, Sovereigns, Krugerrands, uh, Britannias to a point, uh, Maple Leafs, very popular they are. Uh, all, all the usual suspects, although we've been selling all sorts of things from Swiss Brunelli, 
uh, e even uh, um, French 20 francs are, are, are popular here now. Um, strange coins like Austrian four ducats and hundred coronas, Mexican 50 pesos. Uh, there, are, there are others like the Australian one, uh, one ounce nuggets, um, the, the Austrian philharmonica. All of those are all popular at the moment. People will buy anything. And are you experiencing, you're not experiencing yourselves any shortage of, um, should we say, industrial size gold and silver bars? No. Uh, no there's no shortage of those at all. We, we, we're moving tons of silver in here. Uh, we have no difficulty getting physical supplies. Uh, we're moving hundreds of kilos of gold. And again, we're having no difficulty getting physical supplies, but that would be of large market bars, not um, the small bars that we manufacture, which is where there is a, a hold up simply because of our manufacturing capacity. Kilo, kilo bars of gold in the, in, in the general marketplace are in quite short supply, uh, mainly because there are not many manufacturers of them and they have the same problem as us, big demand uh, insufficient capacity to meet that demand or, or they're unwilling to meet it because they've got other things to do. So all these rumours of, of a shortage of silver, you would dismiss them? Uh, well, I haven't experienced any shortage myself. In sterling, the gold price has remained pretty close to its all-time highs, largely because sterling has, has all but collapsed. But in dollars, gold has been in a downtrend since March. Um, how do you explain this falling price uh, uh, in the futures market and this huge uh, physical demand that you're experiencing in the retail market? How do you explain that divergence? Okay, I, I, I understand your confusion with the contradictory uh, sides of the business there. Um, there is huge physical demand, uh, and, and indeed the price hasn't gone up like that. And that physical demand isn't just in the UK. It's, uh, we're experiencing great difficulty buying coins in any volume uh, anywhere in the world. So it's uh, America or the UK or Europe. Um, there are no sellers and there are plenty of buyers. Now, what seems to be happening, and it's always difficult to be precise, but what seems to be happening is that there are a lot of hedge funds uh, that are, are having people withdraw cash from the funds because they've been dissatisfied with the performance and that kind of thing lately, or they've got liabilities to pay elsewhere. And what you have to remember is that when, say, a private client invests a million pounds into a hedge fund, the hedge fund goes and spends 30 million by borrowing the 29. Mm -hmm. So w what it's done is that million pounds isn't what's been spent. What's been spent is 30 million. And so this is all very well with the hedge, the hedge funds doing this, but of course it accelerates the increase in the price, particularly of commodities uh, or, or indeed any share. And so having, having been rather one way, that is, depositors have had their, their, their deposits multiplied and spent on the commodities, that, that is what has forced up all the commodity prices to a great extent. Now, the hedge funds themselves are being margin called, uh, and so therefore, they're, because they're taking losses on things like shares, and they are, they are being forced to sell something to raise the cash to pay for the, the margin calls on the other things that they're losing money on. Now, the first thing that happens is that they sell the profitable items, such as their commodity positions, including gold and silver, of course, and so they're selling the paper, if you like, into the the market, the same market, where there is big physical demand. So the physical demand is actually stopping the, the market from collapsing entirely. Um, with all that weight of paper on it, it would have gone down much more if the physical buying hadn't been in place. Now, the other side effect is that even those depositors that had put their funds into a hedge fund, when they want to take their million pounds back, the hedge fund is having to sell 30 million pounds to give them back the million because of the multiplication effect. And so it's, it's going down much faster, or it's going down as fast as it would have gone up because of this leverage. And, and that's the first difficulty. Eventually, when the paper sales stop, the physical buyers will prevail and gold will take off. What's and so your, will silver. Uh, and what do you have um, kind of long-term price targets? Would you speculate as to where gold is going to go in the 